Welcome to Watercolors with Karen, part two. So we are going to finish up this horse, and I'm actually doing this the very same day to finish this out, but you can take as many days as you want. So I have kind of dirty water right now, and I think that I will change that out, but part of me wants to just keep this dirty water for a little bit longer because we're still going to be working on the gray and I think I want to clean my backup um, clean water for when we're doing a little different stuff. So I'm just anxious to get to this eye so that's what I want to do first. So we are going to take this little mask pickup and we're going to get our highlight let out and now it looks really funny right now, so don't worry. We've got a lot more to do before we go there. So now it looks kind of funny, but this is where I like to take a really small brush. This is a liner brush, and I'm going to mix a little mixture of sepia and quinburnt orange, kind of thick, because I want to get in there with those eyelashes and a little bit of dark. So what I'm going to do is get in here and make little lines where that got a little thick for my eyelashes and just kind of come in between here where that is. So now you just see a hint of eyelashes and that's better. And I'm going to come back up here and reestablish that line. Now those, we got to let that set just a little bit because I want those eyelashes to be very, um, they're light and they're not white, but they're light. So they're too, they're too much right at this minute. And I also see that my line between here and the horse is a little hard. So I want to just tickle out a little of this right here just soften that just a little bit that already looks better and then underneath as I'm looking as I am going to go back to my liner brush and right underneath his eye in the eyeball it comes down like this so that's where that is and then it comes right back up here so I want to make sure where my white is. Yeah. So it comes up here and forms this line like that. That looks good. And then go back to this brush and this same mixture. And at the edge of his eye, he's just it gets a little bit darker here and darker in here. Just like that. Tickle this out just a little. And I think I'm gonna to go to a little bit of sepia and a little bit of my cobalt blue, which will give me a nice gray look because some of this has more of a gray look right here. So we'll just kind of put that down. Soften this out. And this wanted to go into this a little bit. I didn't want that to happen. So there, I just picked it right back up. Now, a little of this goes right above here, almost like a lid. It is some sort of a lid, but it, it, it's a little bit splotchy. So we don't want to get it too... We want to have a little bit of a broken line. And then this goes a little darker right here. So we'll make that more prominent. We'll just soften this line right here that we just put down. And I'm going over the whole thing on this. I'm not going on the side. I just want this to be a little bit soft. And right in here, I'm going to use that same kind of gray
right down to there. And I want to pick up just a little bit of this. Get that to come down again. That's starting to look good. Now, this I need to lift up. I'm trying to see what that is. Not sure exactly, but on this particular picture, I'm just going to lift that little area right there. For whatever reason, it is just a little bit of a line. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Now, on this, where it's white, we wouldn't want it to be that white, so I'm barely tickling that in. Just take some of that white away like that. Okay, now I want to get like maybe a yellow ochre for those eyelashes with just a hint of brown in it so it stays really light. Maybe even add a little bit of that raw sienna. And we're going to put this down right in here. So you can kind of see, I may have to come back in and add a little more. I might have taken off a little too much. Now also, I like my highlight a lot in the eye, but I feel like it's too big. So I'm going to take a little more of the sepia and mix it into this brown mixture that I already had for the eye. And I'm just going to slim that down just a little bit. Yeah, that, that's going to look way better. There. And I might even put take just a little bit of that off here. See how easy it is to fix something? I like that much better. So now he's got a little highlight, but not quite so prominent. And I feel like I need this line. It kind of got lost here. So I'm going to go back to this line here and just make that darker. Just like that. And that's starting to look really good. See if there's anything else. I feel like that might do it for now. I may come back and decide to fiddle with it a little more. Okay, now where this horse has this really light mane right here, I want to go to my Quinn Burnt Orange. We can always add some darker values in it, but right now I'm just doing kind of a dry brush effect right in here because it's it's kind of stiff hair. It's not like um, the main part, the forelock. It is not soft, soft hair right here. It's when you comb it out, it gets a little bit softer, but it's, it's just got this nice kind of stiff, you know, how they make horse hair brushes and that sort of thing. And here I'm going to add, let's see. Just a little bit more of this Quinn Burnt Orange. I It's gonna look funny right now, but this is part of the main. And I'll come back later with some darker colors and it will make more sense. But right now, this needs to come down a little bit more. And that should be fine when I put the darker colors. Again, don't let this disturb you yet because, or maybe it does but it will eventually make sense and look good. I wanna put a few of the darker colors right there. I don't wanna to put too many though, because we have all kinds of time to come back for this. Okay, a little bit here. Okay, that's kind of dry brushed. I might, well, I might just go ahead and pick a few of these out here Definitely in here, it is darker. And then right here, it has a little bit. Right there, okay. Now, we have a lot of work to still do on this, as you can see. Oh, and I did tell you earlier in the previous video there was just a couple things I wanted to lift a little bit. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get some clean paper towel and right on this ear, this top of the ear should have a highlight. So I want to lift that back out because it got a little bit too much dark in there and I want that highlight. To me, that just shows the light coming through. 
I want the rest of it to be dark brown, but this is little tricks you can use here. And this will soften this out just a little bit too. And if you'll remember, I lifted some of this out, but I didn't lift enough. So because I didn't, this is where this little brush will come in handy. Now I wanna show you something. You can't get this brush anymore, but I have found a brush. It's not as good. I don't think I'll ever be able to, well, I for sure can't find these brushes because they don't make them anymore, which is a disappointment to me. But I purchased something, and this is my second pack of them. And they're a good substitute if you like to do some of these little touches that I am making right now. And I just ordered this off of Amazon. And what it is, is a scrubber brush. It's called Creative Mark Scrubber. It picks up color from select areas, creates highlights, corrects airs. And so you always got to keep that very, very wet and just sop it right back up. You do not want to disturb your paper. So I am using, when you see me doing this, it may seem like I'm scrubbing really hard. I am not. I guarantee you I am not. I am keeping a very light touch because once you disturb the paper, you have ruined your painting. Some people would never do this, but again, I learned it from someone who it was amazing and um, a national award winner with watercolor. And it was my first time I got introduced to a scrubber. So it's a great tool. Now this line that we did in the previous video is way, 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 way too hard. And I would like to take my little scrub brush and just work on this side. Lots of water, lots of water. And I'm just scrubbing the edge. And I'm gonna go down with my paper towel into the colored area. And that's the difference. If I move up into the white area, it's going to look funny. But if I move it down into my already established color er colored area, it really makes a difference. So I don't have to do too much now because I've still got to establish a lot of this, but this hard edge is bugging me. So before we go any further, I just want to take that down. Again, very light touch. And you have to even have a lighter touch on these little Creative Mark ones because they're stiffer than this brush. And that's why you've just got to use caution. Okay, we are ready to go back to this horse. Now in here, this is, I want to do some of the same thing I did here. I think I won't use this big of a brush, but I want to get this really dark in this area. So I'm going to mix some of my Quinbert Orange and definitely some of my Burnt Umber. And I think since we established such nice colors with that mineral violet, I'm going to add that as well at this point. All right, that's what I want. I want it really dark where I see it dark. It comes to right about his eye. So I'm going to pick up in here and I probably should just go in this area so we have a cohesive feel and I don't have a hard line there. Now, remember, I am going to soften this white area as soon as I put this down. So I think I'll only go down on one side first so this does not dry on me in the meantime. And it comes down to about right, well, it actually comes down to about right here. So I'll just carry this down with this darker color. right down to about right here. Now, obviously I can't leave it like this. Actually, I'm going to make this a little bit whiter anyway. Right there, and then it comes down to this nice soft area. Okay, first thing, soften the outside here because I am at a stopping place right there. And this is where it's important. I need to soften this here. 
soften this inner area so I don't get a hard edge. You really want to keep this beautifully soft and wow, it's drying really, really quick. So you got to be kind of careful. Work fast. Okay. And I don't mind a little color in there, but I don't want too much color in there. So I'm just coming back, sopping a little of that where it would come out. Okay, now it will come down. Get a little bit more here. So we'll go back to those same colors. And right down here, we're gonna do the same thing. Now this will be easier because this one is not gonna be as long of a line. So I have to work fairly fast still. Softening, coming back on this side, softening. Okay. Now, what I might end up doing on some of this, I want some little hairs to come in here. And the first time I did it, which I told you I had to do this twice, I ended up using um, masking all the way down here. And, and it really ended up turning out nice, but it was a lot more work because it was too harsh and I didn't want that look this time, so I decided not to use the masking. Um, so that's something you can or can't use. It's, it's up to you. Just decide what you want. But what I do want is I just want a little bit of hairs coming in here. Very little. I know I have to soften this out, but I want it to show just a little bit of hairs because that's what you would see on a horse. So I'm really, really going to, I'm taking a chance here that this will be, it may spread out too much. Yeah, it looks like it is. So maybe that wasn't a good idea. Now, I could be really upset and go like, oh no, I loved it again. But I'm not gonna get upset because this, a nice clean paper towel, whoa, my paper towel's sticking. A nice clean paper towel is gonna take care of that. So. I'm going to dip in here and literally just scrub this a little bit and dip. And look at that. It's like it magically disappeared. So if you do that, don't worry if it didn't go exactly the way you want it to go. Okay. Or didn't want it to go, I should say. I actually like that, So, but it's just not ready to... It's just not ready for me to... Take it with the little hairs right now because it's too wet now. Okay, so we'll just come back to that a little bit later. Okay, now I want to show you a little trick here before we go back into here. Because I want, I don't want my pencil line to be showing here and I want this to be a little bit greener and I want this to pop out. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my green that I originally used and mix a little bit of this on here. Get it kind of loose. And I want, oh my goodness, my husband is sawing again. I've told him when I record, please don't bang like my last video. And um, I think he forgot. So he is, he is sawing something. So you're gonna hear some sawing and I even have the window closed today. Okay, now see how um, I put that in which now pops that out, but I've got to soften around it. I don't wanna look like I added it right now. So there's some ways to do that. See, I'm kind of going back over this whole thing just to soften it. And now I wanna drop just a little bit of a darker green here. So I think I'm going to go to my um, olive green I really want this, see how wet it is now? I can kind of just manipulate this how I want. So I'm going to do the same thing on this. And this is a good way if you didn't get it dark enough and you're like, ah, oh, just didn't get it dark enough. And now what do I do? This is a good way just to come back. 
I'm gonna wet this area right here because I want some of that olive green to come in here because that is a pretty, pretty color. This one's made by Holbein as well. So it'll kind of just mix with what I have, only give it a deeper value than what the light green I used. Remember I didn't put those tree trunks in? This may be a good time where it's gonna be damp to go ahead and throw those in. So what I'm gonna do is do that because I actually like the looks of that. So I'm going to soften a few areas here and over here because I want some tree trunks here because I went to all the trouble to put all that green up there because of the tree trunks. Now I want them to be fuzzy because they're going to be in the background and I want them to be kind of dark. So I'm gonna to go to my sepia. Ooh, that's really dark. Mix that in there really good. Now there's this real point of I don't want it to be too, too um, wet and I don't want it to be too dry. So we're gonna try and experiment here, hopefully. This will work. I kind of just push my brush down a little bit. Okay, right down here. Put it a little thicker up here. Should be okay. And actually that looks like it's just about the right amount of moisture. So it's coming out a little bit in a softness and um, that's okay. And then I want to just put a little branch here and really put just one here, just so you get the idea that there's some trees in the background. I'm gonna bring, I don't know if I, I don't really wanna bring this one down further, but we'll put another one. Now this is not as wet. Some of it is. So we'll just kind of go like this. Now, for you that might think, oh my goodness, I wish you hadn't put this. <laughs> that's okay. If you don't like it, that's fine. But I like it because that was one thing I wanted to capture with the picture. But I'm gonna add some more green and how we can get rid of where it spreads out too much is I can just literally go like this and take a little of that out. I still need to go on the other side and do that. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more greenery back there. See how I can just kind of take some of that fuzz away? It's like I said, there's kind of a right time to do it and kind of a time you have to be really, really careful. So we want a little bit thicker trunk here. Now see, this is not wet at all. So I don't know that I like that that much because it's looking like something's sticking out of his head. So what we're gonna do is just soften our sides so it has that kind of soft, blurry look. I'm gonna do one more time on this side. So we're purposely wanting it to spread out just a little bit. And we'll put another tree trunk right down here. And do the same thing. And then I gotta get back on this horse, right? All right. Good, I like that. And I want another branch coming off Maybe, maybe we'll have one coming off this way. That's nice and wet and that's good. Right there, make this one a little bit thicker. We're gonna make this one come over like it's up here. Make sure we have a nice thick one here. Now that one, as you see, is pretty dry as well, but we'll just make it a little bit thicker so it's like a big tree branch behind. So because that was dry, what I need to do is wet it. Let that one go right off the page. 
don't want to get it too complicated, but it's kind of nice to have a little bit of that behind it. Okay, so now quickly soften those edges. And soften that right edge. And I do like this. This reminds me very much of the picture. And I did want to capture that earlier, but see, it's kind of nice to know you can go back and do it. Now, with what I just did, this is really what I want to do. So I'm going to take some more of that olive green. And in those branches, I just want to make us think that there is some greenery back there. So I am using the side of my brush and kind of doing this loosely. And I think I want to come down here by the eye again. And get the idea that there is some trees and some greenery back there. Right down to here. We don't have to put it everywhere, but we don't want to look like it's important to make sure we don't just put it in one area. If you're going to put it in the area, it needs to go like behind the ear. You see it behind and maybe to the side of the ear and use little gaps. But this feels good to me. I don't know if it feels good to you, but it feels really good to me to get this done. Just in here and right here, I think what I'm going to do is just go a little bit darker on this side. I'm going to pick up a little bit of a different tone of green mixed with my olive green and let that just where that's nice and wet now because of that tree trunk just drop a little of that color in here and there okay we're we're done enough for this now this is too hard because this is all background trees so we'll soften that out and I think we're good to go Okay, back to our horse. I like that. Now, again, that's a personal preference. You may not like it and you may wish or choose to leave that off your particular picture. And that is a personal choice. And I don't expect you to do it exactly like me. Sometimes when I um, am watching somebody, I think, well, I like that, but I don't think I would do that. And that's okay. That makes it kind of fun, actually. So you can have somewhere to go with that. Now, I feel like we need to get into this nose. We still have a lot to do here, and we have a lot to do here. But I want to get into this nose and um, really get it the way it needs to be. So right around here, this is a his nostril goes very dark. So I'm going to mix some really dark sepia right here. And... I want to just put that down. This is really dark, but I am going to soften it around the edge. I need a little bit more water, a little more paint. All right. So it almost goes like a question mark. It's a kind of a, that shape. And then there's a little part in here that goes like this. So this comes around here. And it goes really wide right here. Now when that's dry, I'm going to put in some brown here. But first, what I want to do is soften this around so I don't get this hard, hard edge here. So we'll just tickle this edge right in there, right around there. Now I found when you use sepia, you have to soften this really quick. For some reason, it dries really quick. I don't know why. And if you don't get the softening done that you need to right away, it is difficult, very difficult to get done. Now I want to use this current patch that I have, but I wanna add just a little bit of my Quinn Burnt Orange in here, soften it up a little bit. I wanna come down here by this mouth where I see it go really dark again. There we go, with it soft. 
he is actually building a shop. So I think that's probably what he's doing and he's not thinking that that sound carries. But it's okay if you can just bear with it a little bit. He's a good man, so it's okay. So we're going to soften this down. And then this particular horse has this beautiful little piece of pink right on his lip. So we're going to put that down. All right. Now this is a little too bright pink right here. So I'm gonna tone this down just by, this one's okay, down by his mouth. And I'm going to put a little bit of that Quinn Burnt Orange and drop it in here. And that'll give me the exact tone that I'm trying to achieve, which is kind of a brownish pinky tone. And then in here, we're gonna go back to this, right around here, this muzzle part. Oh, and if you've ever felt horses, they have the softest, sweetest right here. It's all so soft and so pretty. I love horses. I always wanted a horse when I was a little girl, and it just wasn't going to happen. My parents couldn't afford a horse for one. And number two... We had no place to put one, even if they could have afforded it, we would have had it been corralled. Now, right in this first area, before I go any further, I want to drop a little bit of blue. I'm going to go to a cobalt blue because it's kind of grayish, and I want to just drop that in there. We'll maybe come back later and put a little different color. But right now, that's what I see. It's kind of gray. We will put some color back onto here. And this right here is still that kind of grayish blue. Okay. This part stays white, but white is never just white. So we're gonna drop just a little bit of gray that I picked off my palette. And then we're gonna go back to this brown and drop this where we see this little bit of pink on his nose. He's got a little bit on his mouth too. And let's see, I wanna drop a little more there. I think what my husband, he's either building his shop or he's I don't know, because he also was, they're going to, the neighbors are going to help build a fence. We have a fence, but it's just looking a little worse for wear. So they're going to go together and build a fence. They might be getting some of those done. I'm not sure. But next time I'll have to ask him to no pounding and no, no drilling, okay? <laughs> or, or a sawing, I should say, with the chain. It's not a chainsaw. What is it? Uh, I don't know. Electric saw. I don't know. Just enough to make a little bit of noise there. Now around here is kind of that charcoaly gray color. So we're going to mix this right in here. And this is all the muzzle and it's so soft and so pretty. And we'll put a little of this here. And we got that here. We like that. Okay, and then there's a little bit of that same pinky tone right on his mouth, right here. And I think we're good on this part for now. Okay. Want it a little bit darker still here, right in the corner of his mouth. It goes really, really dark. So I want to drop just a little bit of that there. And right here, it goes darker too. So we'll put that down here. That has kind of a soft line there. Soften, always soften, soften, soften. You guys probably hate when I keep saying soften, soften. But it's what makes the picture look good. So if you want it to look good and no hard lines, that's what you got to do. 
So I wanted to tickle a little of this and make it just a smidgen darker right in here. There. And then I noticed that this darker mouth, we have some pink down there, but this part goes darker too. So underneath here, he's got this real dark part underneath the little mouth. So we want to make sure that, that is accurate. Okay, just about done with that. And I think we can call that good for now. Okay, this horse is coming. It's looking nice. And I think I'm going to put a little of this brown color right in here. Yeah, that looks better. And maybe just a little bit of the deeper brown to touch on there, right where it goes in the shadow. Okay. I feel like this still has a little bit of darker coming out here, right in here. This part definitely comes out just a little bit darker. This may drive some people crazy because I want to capture all of this, but I want it to be right. I don't know. This is the perfection in me that just comes out and wants it to look so good. And hopefully you want it to look good as well. All right. Going to go back to a really dark sepia. And we're going to go back to our mineral violet. Right in here. Want a little bit more of the Quinburnt Orange. And I'm going to still get a little bit of that mineral violet. Okay. And I feel like we need a little more down here. Right down here where it goes super, super dark. And I am going to take a chance and just do a little bit of negative painting in there. Because I don't want that to look like such a hard line. So if I just tickle a little bit of that there, I think that looks nice. Okay. Let's see what we need. Obviously, we need some more work here, some more work here. So we're going to go back to this super dark color here. And negative paint a little bit here. Comes right up to here. Now, when you do that, you can't... Just let that be hard like that. We can get the idea this is negative painting, but you got to make sure that it has a nice, clean, soft line. Right down here. I really want to make sure that that lighter color here gets to be highlighted like that. And it goes darker. So I've got to work kind of fast where I see this. And I'm going to have to work on the inside so I capture that light area like this. And then I got to work fast on my outside so that I can capture that beautiful softness in there. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because I keep adding different colors in here or the same color to make it look darker. You've got to try to control this brush to make it look smoother. And so I would say this maybe is the hardest part. It's not hard, but it might be the hardest part because this is where you really want it to come all together and you want this to look right. So 
you have to just be confident about some of these colors that you're using and work fast. And you see that I am speeding up the pace right here, not because I'm trying to finish the video sooner, just because I want to make sure that these areas stay a little bit light and I have a contrast. In all paintings, we've talked about this before, it's so, so important that we have values. And I'll just remind you of what values are. So values are the darkest of dark and the lightest of light. So all of our white is going to be the lightest value in this painting. Our dark will probably be like the ears and some of this area and around the nose. So it's like a scale in, in a sense, a scale that you can actually buy in the, in the craft stores or paint stores and they have the top of the scale is a black. It's so, so black. And then it goes like a very dark black. And then it comes to a gray black and it goes all the way down until it actually comes to a white, a pure white. So it's like they left the paper white at that point. And it's so pretty, it, it really makes a difference. Okay, we're starting to get some contrast in here. So now I want to add, I'm gonna quickly now change my water, clean my palette because my water is getting really disgusting now. So quickly a new clean paper towel to finish this. Just take a minute. I usually have on any video I do, I have three containers of water. I've already gone through two. So this will be all the final touches on this last one with clean water. Okay. Put this back up and we're ready to go. Okay, so now I feel like I've got some areas that I really need to blow dry because I want to add some more colors and values in this but it's too wet and I'm gonna mess it up if I don't. So I'm gonna do a quick blow dry. Okay, I feel much better about putting some different colors on top of this now that we have a little more dryness to this. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up some colors. And this time I'm going to go back to my yellow ochre and I'm going to add my Quinburnt Orange. And I'm going to go, I want it to be cohesive. I'm not done, I'm gonna make it different colors, but what I'm gonna do is just take this color all the way down to try to just melt some of these colors together. And then I'll go back and I will put some different colors on. So in my lightest of light, even though I'm using the same color, it's okay because you get the idea that there's darker and lighter areas. And this is really helpful when you're not sure where to go and you can just go to one color all the way down, even on top of this nice blue gray, and it kind of starts to make it get cohesive again. I'm going to put right down in here. I'm not going to touch that white. No, I'm not going to touch the pink. But we will put it right in here over that gray. I really like what we have, and I want to mix up a little bit more to go down here and right in here. So same thing. It just makes a nice cover now to get it cohesive. Now, the only thing I didn't get, I didn't get in here. So let's... Come down here, right in here. Maybe make some of these a little bit darker. Even the ears, it'll still pick up the light, like I said. Okay, come down here. And then on this side here. 
bet you I still didn't get enough, huh? I'm going to have to have enough to come down on this side. Whoopsie. This isn't that big of a side. See how I'm using a bigger brush, too? And this just creates a softness, too, by just doing one cohesive color, kind of what we did on the very beginning to establish our lights. But this causes this all these colors and the many, many colors I use just to flow together. I think this really, I like this look. I don't know if this is something you can appreciate, but I think it really makes it a nice way to just put these colors together. Okay, I don't want to get too much of my white. And then the only thing I want to do is go up here and do the same thing. Just up there. Okay, that's good. Now, obviously, though, we're going to have to let that dry again. So give me just a moment to dry it. And then what we can do is just fine tune this. That's all we're going to do is fine tune it and put our mane in and take off the masking that we have. And we'll have to fix that up a little bit. We'll use our scrubber brush just a little here and there. And then we're good. So I'm going to blow dry really quick once more. This won't take very long. Okay, all dry. And actually, I just love the way that brought all the light and darkness in. So I may not have to bring any more dark in, except for maybe right here. But I actually really, really love what it just did. So what we're gonna do is go back to this main area. And I want to mix I'm going to keep this mixture on here. I'm going to pull it up here just a little bit, and I'm going to add some blue. I'm adding some Verdita blue because any brown and any blue make a beautiful gray, and I don't want it to be a really dark gray. So since I already had that mix on there anyway, this is just perfect for what I want to do. Okay, so I want to put a little teeny bit of that in here. We still want that nice look of white. Ooh, it's raining hard outside. All right. Just a little bit. We still want it to look white. We're going to add just a little bit here and there just to kind of tone it down just a little. And in here, really important for our main, we want to go, hopefully you can see this, make sure I'm clearly in the view here. We're gonna take this down right in here where it's white, but there is some definite areas in the shadow that fall in here and they look about this color. Now we still have all of this to be taken off, this where it's blue. But what this will do is just give us these nice soft areas. You know they're white and they'll be white, but it isn't so stark. I still wanna come up just a little bit here. There we go. And just make that a little bit more here here where it kind of goes up like that all right I think we just about got it now I notice on my picture where the darkness starts coming into the light it actually has some really deep strands of almost black. So I am going to make a few of those coming down into this area. So might have to go a little darker right now. This is my first, I keep seeing this really dark area right here. And I want to get that. 
and I also see it right here. And at one time I darkened it. This is a bad brush to use for that. At one time I darkened it, but it didn't get dark enough. Now remember, I told you that sepia by itself, and so is mineral violet by itself, can dry kind of dull. And I don't want a dull look there, so I'm mixing the two together, which is Quinburn Orange and that sepia. And that is right above here where that goes darker. And that to me is really important to have that little spot of darkness. Soften that down. And now I want to go back to my little liner brush. I want to add a little more sepia. And maybe just a little bit of my paint gray so I get a really rich, deep color here. And right into my white. I want to add a few strands there where I see it coming down just kind of like there's a transition and part of this comes right over here like this. As with anything we must soften that down because hair doesn't go super stringy like that. So I'm just going to kind of soften that whole look You'll get the idea that it is coming down, but it's not going to be so harsh. Okay. Now, before too long, we're, we're going to be able to take off that um, masking, but it's too wet right now. But I know here, I'm going to go back to my Quinn, my little purples, and my Quinn burnt orange. I just have got to get this darker right by this nose area. And then really, I don't want to go too much more into my darker areas. I want to kind of leave them, but this still has darker in here and I want to capture that because I think it's really, really important to capture that. And it still causes that um, white to pop out in a good way. So I'm getting this all nice and soft for my transition. Again, sepia mix is can definitely throw you and it can just get so darn hard looking so quick if you're not careful and it dries quickly. So I'm gonna put just a little bit more here and then it kind of just stops right there. So that's all we're going to do on that part. Okay, now is there any other area? This is where we're so almost done. I've lost a little bit by where it goes darker by his eye, so it comes down here, actually goes into the eye a little bit, and comes down like that. If I didn't soften that, that would just look like I drew a line there, and that is not the look we want to have. Okay, this I can see still needs to be a little softer down here. We'll just tickle that. Tickle that in there. Okay. This right here gets really, really dark too. So here we go again. We're still not done. Getting close though, we really are. I'm gonna put a different color in there this time. I'm going to put, it's called Brown Matter. It has a little bit of a red tone. And I want to just drop a little of this right in here. And I see on my picture, it just kind of has this little transition here. And goes really darker right down here. And then part of it by the mouth comes right up here. Don't want this to intimidate you. That's my main thing, like what I'm doing right now 
it may seem just crazy, but but I'm adding all these colors in here, but I feel like to get all the curves and the that those are just so important that if we don't get them, then they'll just end up not taking shape of the face. It'll look flat. And you don't want a flat looking horse because they have all these different muscles in their jaw and around their eyes, everything. So you want to make sure that you capture that. All right. Here is where I really start needing to make this look browner. That matches right into here. Here like this. And it goes definitely darker right in here. And it actually transitions into this amazing white color, which is mind-boggling. But I guess that's all part of the paint, and it's just so pretty. So we have some, we have some white when we take this off, and I think that's going to be a good thing. I'm going to go just to the Quinbert orange because it gets a little bit redder as we go down here, and I want to capture that. Okay, now the one thing I don't like is this really hard line here. So I'll probably use my scrubber. I'm starting to use my um, brush, but you know what I might be able to do? It goes kind of a gray, and remember where we made that gray? I'm gonna make me a little bit darker gray. The blue and what's already on, yes, right there. So I want to, while this is still really damp, to come down here in this transition, just like that. A little more gray up here. And right in here. And then very soon, seriously, very soon, we're going to take off our mask. And then we're not going to be done because when the mask is going to look really harsh, I can take it off down here because it's dry. I can't right there. I can't right there yet. So we'll just start and get this off. And that comes right out here. So see how pretty that is? However, as pretty as it is, and it is, it's too white. So we have to tone that down just a little bit because it won't look natural. We want it to look white, but not like, oh, it's like blaring white. I wonder if it's too, oh, too wet right there. So I can't do that or I would totally mess up the paper. But as long as we have that transition, remember I told you where I brought the darker colors here? Well, this is getting lost. So I'm going to go, I think, to some green, but I'm gonna add a little bit of gray to it. So I'm gonna to go to this green again, and I'm gonna add some gray that's already on my palette and make that pop out right there. And got to scooch that down because if I don't, it'll look exactly like what I just did. And I don't want it to look like that. So that has to be taken away a little. And we'll just take a little of that up here by the face. So it looks like we meant to do this from the very beginning. Drop a little more of that in there. Well, we're waiting anyway for this to dry. It's a good time to do this. Get a little bit more of that. Get a little bit more of this to make it kind of a dirty color. And I want to have a little bit here going up around his cute little face. Oh, 
Okay, so almost done. This is where, when I do that, I have to make sure that I soften these out. Otherwise, it won't look right. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Yep, I like it. Put a little more here. Oops, I don't usually get hairs. We had a dog, I love dogs. Our dog passed away on Valentine's Day. We'd had her a long time. She was a rescue dog. And I just loved her. She was part lab and part a little bit of everything. But the one thing I don't miss when I'm painting, I would constantly have hairs like that floating in the air. But I miss her. Oh, I miss her. She was a good dog to us. Okay. So I feel like I want... Ah, guess what? I... I ended up covering that up. Here I tried to pull that out and I ended up covering it out, but that's okay. I'll scrub it out a little bit. Okay, so almost done. Let's see if this is dry enough. Ooh, it's almost dry enough, not quite. This part is. So we can get a little more of this out. This is just where some of these hairs come in. And I purposely wanted a lot. We're not going to leave them white. Just to see that there's a separation on our paper from these nice forelock hairs. This one is good enough. We can take this off. And I like that really curly look there. Again, right now it looks silly. But it'll look good. This is... Mm, I know that's not dry enough, but this might be dry enough. Right here, that curly cue coming down here. Got some right here. You don't want to be impatient. I don't want to be impatient taking this off before it's too soon. That feels like it's dry, but see right here, that was still too wet and I messed up the paper a little bit. So, boy, make sure it's dry. I can fix that, but you can't always fix that. So, what we'll do is wait and I don't need to dry it again. We'll just wait and we'll fix some of this. So what we want is a nice, soft, kind of between Quinburnt Orange and I think that raw sienna that we used originally. I want it to be really light, really, really light. So all of those beautiful little hairs that we're putting down will show to be light. And we're still not done. We're going to scrub a little bit to make it look a little more natural. We'll add just a little bit more contrast in there to make it look more natural as well. But this is what we're planning to do. We can leave a few of them white, but mostly not. I mean, just maybe spots of them white. But for the most part, they're just too harsh to, to do that. Right here. Oh, that's going to drive me crazy, but we'll get it. We'll get it. Right there. Okay. We can definitely go down to here. Now, this is white. So, I don't want to do this because this is white. So, I don't want to have the same color here that I have here. This is fine right here. We can make a little bit of this. It is white, but we'll just barely cover that so you have a light look. This, we need to put just a little bit of blue on this so it's not so white looking. I'm toning it down basically just a little bit with the blue just a little bit and I can see that I'll probably need to use a little bit of scrub brush down in this to soften these hard lines. There's that fine line that sometimes the um, masking makes perfect and other time the masking can get really hard lines which I don't like. I'm going to use a little bit of blue in my main here area. 
Again, it'll still look white, but we're just gonna put a little bit of this in here. Now I'm prolonging the agony of being able to take this out when I keep adding, but I think this part is okay now. So we'll take this one out. I'm really using a light touch just in case. Yeah, we're good on that. Make sure, yep, I'm good on this. Okay, there's another one here. I think I can get that one out. You can, I, I feel the edge because you can totally miss something. Yeah, I have some in there. I'm waiting on that, waiting on that. Remember that was too wet. Okay, waiting on this a little bit. So what I wanna do, I'm not gonna actually scrub this. I'm going to take this brush here and try to get that white look, but not have it be so harsh. So I keep using a clean paper towel and I know it's not ideal, but I don't like the harshness of this. So in this case, there's some right there as well. In this case, it doesn't always work the way you want it to, and it's just a little harsh. So I just need to soften it a little, keep pulling it down. But I wanted these really thick, thick pieces like it shows in the, in the actual photo. I want that to come down and show that this is main. So I'm disturbing a little of my color. Overall, don't worry, we'll be able to fix it and I'll show you what to do to do that. But right there. This is too light. So I'm picking up just whatever color is around it and we'll do it that way. Okay, so now in this area, let's see if we can fix this right here. Yeah, right in there, okay. So remember where I accidentally covered up my white right here. So what I'm gonna do is reclaim my white with this scrub brush. And it's just a little portion, so I don't have to scrub off too much. I may have to come back and put a little more green there once it's dry, just to keep it cohesive here. I'm going to make this a little softer on the outside edge, coming in like that. Okay, can't do anything about that just yet. Still got to wait. Um, this is still too wet, so I don't want to do that. In here, I can soften this a little bit. So I can take my brush and just give me this softer edge that I want down his nose because I know this is soft, 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 and I don't feel like it looks that soft on the picture. This is where I love my scrub brush. Just taking it down a little bit, as you can see, and just keeping that in a real soft look. Right here, it definitely needs a little softer. There, down here. It's got too hard of an edge. You could use your brush, but I find it takes forever and you take a really good chance of using your, um, of ruining your brush. And brushes, some are cheaper than others, but you don't want too cheap because then you'll get what you pay for. And that is not a good thing to be able to have your brush be fried. So you don't want to do that either. Okay, like that. That just softened that up in a way. Maybe we'll just take a little bit here and do the same thing on this edge. Okay, just a little. Looks like it's a little harsh at the top. Take that out. 
And maybe I like this. I think this turned out really nice. Okay, so these are a little harder than I want them to be. So I'm very carefully tickling my little brush down. I'll add a few more colors. This is just supposed to be light and I want it to look like this to a point, but not quite, is this stringy? It is, but it, it, there's a difference between stringy and a softened look down here. So I can achieve that by adding some more colors, which I will, but not this second. Just wanna kinda of tone these down just a little bit. And here, this was actually quite white coming down here. I'll try to pick up a little bit of that. This is going to have to be scrubbed back to the white just a little bit. I know I had to take some of this and move it. But if I can just take a little bit of this like this and take a little color out so that doesn't look quite so harsh because all of these come down. Now, I'm not gonna scrub, scrub, scrub. Don't worry about this. I am gonna come back with some white, my no bleed white, and I'm going to make a few more of the white lines here where it truly is white. I wanna pick up just a little bit of this where I lost a little of the line. There, that looks good. It's got a little bit dark right here, so we'll just pick up a little bit of that. Okay, all in all, I'm liking this. This should be dry now. So let's pick up these right here and make sure we got any of these. I think this is still too wet here because I just was scrubbing in there. It's really coming along though. I feel like we have a really nice horse picture. But there's just a few more areas I wanna attach. So let that dry for just a few. I'm going to take my, let's see, I think this brush here, and I'm going to go back to my sepia. I'm gonna go back to my Payne's Gray. And I'm going to mix a pile of Quinbert Orange by itself. And I want to get a little contrast in here. So, you know, before I do that, I feel like this might just be too... I'm going to tone that down just a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to make these same kind of squiggly lines in between just to give a little contrast. I'm liking this. So I'm doing that same kind of squiggly little lines right in here. I wanna keep those light lines that I softened out. I feel like this looks good. And the same thing here. These aren't quite so squiggly. They're a little bit squiggly, but not as much. Some of them just go into straight lines. These little liner brushes don't hold a lot of water, so you're gonna to have to re-mix in there pretty often. Okay, just like this. Sometimes I just use my finger to soften it down. This right here lost some of the darkness, so I wanna add a little bit of that darkness by the ear. Kind of soften that out as best I can. Okay. Now in here, it kind of gets a little bit feathery here. So just softening a little area out right there. Okay, I like that a lot. This I feel like needs to be lighter, so I'm going to do a little bit of scrubbing there. And let's see. 
this needs to connect to the head. I didn't get that, so straighten that out just a little bit. We're so almost done, yay. Okay. So as I said, this ended up being not quite the way I wanted that to look. And since that's a transition between the light and the dark, it's time just to soften that out completely. And this is where I like to study my picture, really look at it, see what I might have missed, see what I can improve on. And this is the best way to do it. So right here above the ear, there's this nice little softness that comes right down here. And then, as I told you, this was way too red and just needing a little help here. So I'm using a lot of water, a lot of water, and a very, very, very light touch. That already looks better. And the same here, there's a transition between here and the white. So we want to achieve that. I don't want this to be a hard line. It's still in that transition area. And I might even come back and add a little bit of gray brown here. I want this. To oh, look at me. That's why you should go into the dark area, but look how easy that picks up. So it isn't a big deal. I want one more here. I'm just not gonna be as aggressive with my paper towel. Okay. And let's see. So far, I'm liking what I'm getting. This up here needs to be lighter. I see that it's totally lighter. And I'll brush down this time like I should with my paper towel. Um, let's see. This has an edge, a little bit more on that ear. I feel like this is a little bit lighter above. Again, you can do this with a brush. This is just faster for me. And so this is what I like to do at the end. Just take off a little here, a little there. And this is kind of like my finishing pieces. This is lighter above this nose. So I'll do that. These little areas get kind of light right here. This area here, this area right here comes down like that. I love this, this look because you can get some of this muscular type thing just by taking off a little here and there. Now, I'm not opposed to putting some color back on, but I want to remember that, what I need to do. Okay, I think we're getting there. Now, what I'd like to do as a final touch, I want to take some of this No Bleed White into here, and I want that to have a little bit of whiteness down here where I had to. Hopefully what I'm hoping to achieve is that I can get it looking more like here, like here. So I'm going to stir this in here, get quite a bit. So it's fairly thick, but I want a very, very light touch. Okay. So what I hope to achieve here 
just to come down here with a light touch and just put this in. And if I feel like it gets too harsh, I'll just slide it off at the top. Oh, now it's getting not only rainy, but windy. We've had more wind this year than normal. We don't normally have that much wind, but it's been an odd year, I have to say. Idaho even had an earthquake right in the midst of the coronavirus. It was a pretty significant one. And, okay, watch me tickle these tops because I don't want to look like I just started them right there, even though I did. I want to just cause a little transition period where it softened there. Okay. Anyway, so we've had some odd little weathers and we're still getting aftershocks. Even after all that time, two months, two months ago, because this is May, we're still getting aftershocks. I haven't felt them, but different people have reported, and sure enough, they have coincided with what the weather says, and just kind of weird. Okay, see where I softened that in there? This is where I'm using my No Bleed White, just to pick up some of that white, but I'm almost thinking I wish I hadn't have put the masking on it because I'm liking more what I'm doing with my brush. Again, sometimes those kind of things work out great and other times they don't. So you just have to kind of feel for it. But as I told you, it doesn't matter because we can still fix some of this stuff here. So I want to put some of these white strands here where I used the really dark. Right in here. So it now has a place to look like it's some contrast. Here I want to actually pull a couple little strands out. I don't even know if you can really see that. Let me get a little bit thicker here. Here and there on the green, He's got like these little hairs that kind of jut out. The hair just kind of goes all different ways. And underneath his neck, he's got all these, I want to really keep a light touch because they're just thin hairs. I don't even know if you could see this, but they're kind of cute. They're kind of whiskeries right here. I don't want that to go too dark. Just kind of has a little whiskers here, right in here. I don't know if it's because he still has his winter coat, and that could be why. These may not even, you may not even see this show up here. They're very, very faint. I don't like where I put that blue one, so I want to cover that one up with a nice little mark here. I lay my pen, my brush down, kind of like this, making some different intervals with it, dropping it, lifting it back up. I use the same technique on leaves when I'm doing quick leaves, and it's kind of a nice technique. Just make that a little bit darker. That's starting to feel more like a mane now. I'm liking that. So we'll put this little white against the dark. And we are so ready to wrap this up. I'm sure you're all ready to wrap it up too. Anyway, if you have any questions in the comment line, please just mention it and I'll answer you back. If you're unsure of a step I did or you want to private message me, you can do that and just leave your email address or something and I'll be happy to do that or text. I don't know if that's very safe or not on a public site, so you may not want to do that. But um, yeah, and if you have any questions or you see something that you want, you would like me to do in the future, I'm going to probably do a more complicated flower next. I love to do flowers and it may be a two part as well. 
on these two parts, I feel like I can take my time and I'm not rushing so much because when I have to rush, I just don't feel like I'm giving you the service that I really want to. But I'm going to call this good. And so in this video, again, please subscribe. I'm trying to hopefully get a following where people can enjoy painting and um, we can just paint together. And I think that would be fun. Anytime you would love to show me your work, I would be thrilled to see what you've done. And I don't want you to ever think, oh, it's not good enough. Please don't ever think that. We're all at different levels. And the fact that you would even try is so exciting to me. So that is going to end it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will be seeing you soon. Thanks.